The NBA draft is just in a couple of days, and while the draft class is regarded as one of the worst in NBA history, there are some hidden gems that I can almost guarantee will make an impact in this league. So today, I'm going to give you my mock draft for the lottery and give you the reasoning behind these franchises' picks. And while I've tuned into my fair share of college hoops this year, I don't claim to be an expert on either college basketball or international basketball. So what I tell you about these prospects is just what I saw in their games and highlights. If you disagree with any of my picks or think a prospect should go higher than I have them, make sure to comment below your thoughts and remember to like this video and subscribe as we're on the road to 1000 subscribers. So remember to hit that subscribe button and without further ado, let's talk about the team with the first overall pick, the Atlanta Hawks. With the first overall pick in the 2024 NBA Draft, I have the Atlanta Hawks taking Donovan Klingon of the Yukon Huskies. Now I like Donovan Klingon for a lot of reasons, and while I don't think he's the best prospect in this draft, I think he fits what the Hawks need. Now if you look at the Hawks starting lineup for next season, the 1-4 through four is a starting lineup is pretty solid. You look at Trey Young, DeJounte Murray, DeAndre Hunter, and Jalen Johnson. Those are four guys who could potentially be building blocks for this team's future. And I understand that maybe they do want to trade Trey Young or DeJounte Murray, or maybe even both if the rumors are true, but I don't know if that's what the franchise want to do considering how young these guys are, how talented these guys are as offensive threats. And if DeAndre Hunter can stay true to his progression, he had a great bounce back season last year, and Jalen Johnson can continue improving after a huge jump from his rookie year, then it seems like the Hawks need to invest in that five position. And while Clint Capella is great, he's getting older, and he's on an expiring deal, I wouldn't be shocked if they trade him next season, or if they just let him walk in free agency after next year. So they're going to need someone to fill that five position. And luckily for them, I think there's a guy in Donovan Klingon that really fits their team's needs. He's a great rim protector. He's a great finisher at the basket. He's going to be perfect for the Hawks. And I really am looking forward to what the Hawks would do if they do take Donovan Klingon. Now, of course, there is the potential of Alex Saar. And that's not something that you can easily pass up on. But if the rumors are true that he has not worked out for them, there's no need to take the risk. Just take the safe pick, take Donovan Klingon, who could be a starting center in this league for 10 to 15 years. And with the second pick in the 2024 NBA draft, the Wizards are so excited that Alex Sar has fallen to them. Now, I know that the Wizards don't really have many building blocks right now. They had some flashes of potential from both Denny Avdia and Bilal Koulibaly last season, but they really do need to fix that guard position. I don't think Tyus Jones or Jordan Poole is really going to be the answer there, of course. And But I think that can be something that they fix later. I think right now, Alex Sar is the best prospect on the board. He has the most potential in this draft. He could very well be an all-star just a couple of seasons, the way he impacts the game. He is an incredible prospect, and I think the Wizards are extremely happy that Alex Sar has fallen to them, and he will be great for them for many years to come. Now, of course, it's the Washington Wizards, so uh, don't get too excited for any prospect they draft because, you know, it's Washington. But he has the highest potential in his draft. He's very versatile, and maybe if he lives up to the hype, he could be the rookie of the year and very well get the Wizards to maybe 25 wins next year. And with the third overall pick in the 2024 NBA Draft, I have the Houston Rockets taking Zachary Rizache. Now, in my mind, the Rockets have four legit building blocks that they can build upon to potentially become a title contender with Amen Thompson, Jalen Green, Jabari Smith Jr., and Alperen Shundin. Those are four guys who could potentially be four starters for a championship-level team. All they're missing is that small forward position. And right now, they have great players at that position, like Dylan Brooks, Cam Whitmore, and Tari Eason. Those are three really solid guys, but none of them have proven to me, at least yet, that they are worthy of the starting spot in the future. So at this pick, the Rockets are going to take Zachary Rizache. He's a three. He's a great two-way threat who has shown flashes of being able to knock down threes at a high rate. And that's something that the Rockets' potential starting lineup in the future would be missing. They'd be missing that three and D wing, someone who can lock down an opposing forward teams forward. They can also come in, shoot some threes. I think that's going to be a perfect fit for the Rockets, who already have some pretty good scoring options on that team. Zachary Rizache can take a back seat, just spot up, knock down some threes, defend very well, and I think this is a great match for the Houston Rockets here. And with the fourth pick in the 2024 NBA Draft, I have the San Antonio Spurs taking Reed Shepard from Kentucky. 
Now, the Spurs' biggest need entering the offseason is, of course, capturing a true playmaker that can feed the ball to Victor Wembanyama. And while Reed Shepard has his fair share of concerns, whether that be his size standing at only 6'1 and a half, or the question of whether he can be a true point guard, I think Shepard's show in his one year in Kentucky that his lack of size is made up for in his excellent basketball IQ and knockdown shooting abilities. He's going to be a great guard for the Spurs if they do decide to take him. I think he has a long-term potential here, despite those concerns that I mentioned before. I think Reed Shepard's a great basketball player. I think he could very well fit with the Spurs and maybe be a part of their long-term future. With the fifth overall pick in the NBA draft, I'm going to have the Detroit Pistons take Modest Buzelis of the G League Ignite. Now, the Detroit Pistons probably had one of the worst 12-month stretches of any franchise in NBA history. They lost a record 28 games in a row in the regular season, and they fired their new head coach, Monty Williams, after just one year. And while they search for a new head coach, the Pistons, they're going to need to hit a home run on this pick so that the rookie contracts of Cade Cunningham and Jaden Ivey aren't going to waste. So with the projected starting backcourt of Cunningham and Ivy, and big man Jalen Dern shown signs of dominant in the paint, the Pistons are desperately searching for the answer at the forward position. And a great start to that was selecting Asar Thompson last year in the NBA draft, and I think another complimentary piece for this team will be taking Modest Buzelis, who's one of my favorite prospects in this draft. He's a 6'8 point forward, he has a potential to do it all on the court, whether that be shoot, score, play make, or defend. And the one major flaw to his game is his subpar shooting at this point in his career. But before the G League Ignite, he was a pretty solid shooter. And I think he could really upgrade that part of his game and become one of the best players of the Pistons on a team that could potentially be contending in just maybe three to five years if everything goes right with his head coaching search and everything goes right with the moves made other than the young players that they've already drafted. With the number 6 pick in the NBA draft, I'm going to have the Charlotte Hornets take Stefan Castle of the Yukon Huskies. Now, the Charlotte Hornets hit the semi-jackpot last year's draft, as while they would love to have Victor Wembanyama, they got the ultimate consolation prize in Brandon Miller, whose excellent rookie season secured his place as one of the building blocks in Charlotte, alongside Lamella Ball and Mark Williams. Now, the Hornets are only missing their two and their four if you count Ball, Williams, and Miller as their future core. And sitting at number six in this mock draft is Stefan Castle, who's actually my number one favorite prospect in this draft, because Castle has exactly what Charlotte needs, and that's constant intensity on the defensive side of the ball, and that can very easily rub off on his teammates. And if he can continue to show these characteristics on the defensive side of the ball, along with his great ability as a secondary playmaker and a finisher at the rim, Castle could very well be one of the reasons why the Hornets turn it around this season and potentially make a run at a play-in spot. And with the 7th overall pick in the NBA draft, I have the Portland Trailblazers taking Tijon Salon. The Trailblazers are in a tough position, as while there's many guards left on the board that would fit well with this team, they're already set with Simons and Henderson, and the two forwards that would bring offensive impact, which they desperately need, are already off the board. So Portland's going to bank on the potential of Salon and take the 18-year-old Frenchman at number 7. Salon shows flashes of greatness mostly off the ball on both offense and defense, as his instincts and his athletic ability make it hard to contain him in that aspect. And at his size and frame, Salon has the potential to turn into an all-star caliber player. But at this moment, he lacks the shooting ability and isolation scoring skills to make an instant impact. And it may be a couple of years before Salon makes a positive impact on this team. And while I personally wouldn't take Salon this high, I believe the Trailblazers will buy into his potential and try to mold Salon into a building block. That may be tough considering the pieces surrounding him, but at just 18 years old, the Blazers will be able to wait for Salon's development, especially considering how far away they are from contending. And with the 8th overall pick in the NBA draft, I have the San Antonio Spurs taking Cody Williams from Colorado. The Spurs already hit on their first pick, and are now going to be looking to address another need, and that's a forward with the potential to impact the game as soon as possible. And while Cody Williams didn't have the best conference in NCAA tournament run, his value lies with his versatility as he can do almost anything you ask of him on the basketball court. Williams is the brother of OKC's Jalen Williams, and he shows potentials of being at least a solid 3 and D wing, and maybe even with the potential to become a primary ball handler and a top 3 guy for a contending team. And now with Victor Wembanyama, Devin Vassell, and now Reed Shepard, 
Williams will not have to focus on the scoring aspect of his game and instead focus on his playmaking, which at this point in his career leaves a lot to be desired, and also his off-the-catch shooting abilities. Now, Williams certainly has his concerns, mainly with his slender frame, but if he can bulk up and continue to show his versatility, there's real potential for Cody Williams to be starting forward on this Spurs team for 10 years. And with the ninth overall pick in the NBA draft, I have the Memphis Grizzlies taking Devin Carter out of Providence. The Memphis Grizzlies are ready to get back into playoff contention after a rough season last year. And with the starting five almost certainly set at this point, Memphis is going to be looking to add a depth piece that can impact the game right away. Luckily for them, Devin Carter brings the experience factor as well as the shot making and defensive abilities that the Grizzlies are looking for at either guard position. Carter is someone who may not have the highest ceiling, but if you're the Grizzlies and your bench guard options right now are Derrick Rose and Luke Kennard, you'll be happy to know that Carter can come in and instantly be ready to play in a playoff series, something that will be very important in April. As for Carter the prospect, he can truly do it all on the court, whether that be controlling the tempo and setting up shots for teammates, driving to the rim and making a tough layup, or spotting up and hitting a three. The fact that Carter is already 22 may be a turnoff for some franchises, but if he's utilized properly, he may be the player who spends the most time in the league in this draft class. With a 10th overall pick in the NBA draft, I have the Utah Jazz taking Nikola Topic. The Utah Jazz have one of the more interesting situations in the league, as while they're in a rebuild and don't have their cornerstone number one option yet, they are at times extremely competitive and show flashes of future playoff success. So while most teams in a rebuild find themselves in the top 5 of the draft lottery, Utah's highest pick was 9 last year and 10 this year. So while the Jazz have a multitude of needs to fill, it's tough to mark where exactly they should go at with number 10, considering their forward depth, which was questionable last year, should be consolidated by Taylor Hendricks and by Sensible, two 2023 first round picks. But then the perfect pick for the Jazz hit me, and all of a sudden it made so much sense that Danny Ainge would bank on the top 5 upside of Nikola Topic despite his ACL injury. And if and when Topic comes back, which is likely at the start of the 2025 season, Utah at that point will have gotten another lottery pick as well as Jovic, who's one of the best pure scorers and playmakers in this year's draft. And with the 11th pick in the NBA draft, I have the Chicago Bulls taking Ron Holland of the G League Ignite. The Chicago Bulls also have one of the more interesting situations in the NBA, as everyone with a functioning mind can see that they need to rebuild, yet their front office seems to think this core is good enough to compete. However, with Alex Caruso getting dealt for Josh Giddy just a couple of days ago, maybe the Bulls front office can finally see that it's time to deconstruct this roster. And if you just look at the young pieces that could potentially be a part of this team's future, all you come up with is Giddy, Kobe White, and Ayu Dusumu. So the next step is taking the best player on the board that's not a guard. And the player that's left is Ron Holland, a dynamic athlete who has the potential to be one of the best shot creators in the league. And with a great playmaker in Giddy setting him up, and a temporary number one option in either Kobe White or Zach Levine if he returns, Holland can develop his game without too many immediate expectations. And with the 12th overall pick in the NBA draft, I had the Oklahoma City Thunder taking Kalel Ware of Indiana. Now the Thunder don't have too many needs heading into this draft, and with a ridiculous amount of first round picks over the next couple of seasons, there's not much pressure on the Thunder to make a hit on this pick. The team's guard position is already set, especially after trading for Alex Caruso, and unfortunately for them, they just lost out on about four pretty solid forward prospects. So with the 12th overall pick, the Thunder draft a backup big with limitless potential in wear. And maybe a little bit of a reach to take wear in the lottery, but in my mind, he's the best big left on the board, and the Thunder are known for taking players who aren't finished products yet that have a lot of potential. But even with that, Ware put up 16 points and 10 boards a night on the Indiana Hoosiers. As a prospect, Ware has all the tools you would want. He's an athletic freak, he shoots the ball well, and he's a really solid paint protector. The only concern I have for him is his size, as he's only 6'11 and 230 pounds, and the Thunder may not want both of their centers to get bullied by bigger centers. But with his raw abilities and limitless upside, Ware is just too good of a prospect for the Thunder to pass up on. With the 13th pick in the NBA draft, I have the Sacramento Kings taking Tristan Da Silva of Colorado. Da Silva was one of the biggest standouts of March Madness to me because of his versatility and that helped the Buffaloes make it to the second round of the tournament. 
and while his teammate Cody Williams goes higher in this draft, I believe De Silva will be one of the most impactful rookies in the NBA in the mold of Jaime Hawkes. And while players like Rob Dillingham and Dalton Connect have more potential, De Silva's all-around game will be able to impact the Kings immediately, and for a team that has a lot of players either in their prime or entering their prime, the pick at 13 should be able to help the immediate future. And if De Silva can continue impacting the game as he did in Colorado, the Kings may very well find themselves back in the playoffs next year. And with the 14th pick, the Portland Trailblazers take Jared McCain of Duke. The Trailblazers grab one of the best shooters in the draft and Jared McCain to end the lottery. And like I said before, this team seriously lacks offense, and McCain fits a positional need at the two guard with the potential to start right out the gate. Like with De Silva, there are more talented players on the board, but McCain brings value as a 3 and D guard who can run an offense and bring an identity to this team. So with that, my NBA mock draft is complete. Make sure to comment down below who you want your favorite team to pick in this year's draft, and I'll be back in a couple of days with an instant reaction to the draft results. So until then, I'm Julian with Talkback Sports, and I'll see you next time.